Hey guys, it's Deborah. So I think I found something really amazing in the Book of Enoch. If you guys follow my channel, you know I was trying to uh, just revisit the 70 Shepherds of Israel prophecy to recheck to see are we still good for that. Um, there are a few prophecies that are really time sensitive right now, really, really. The 112 Popes and the Kisma, Kaduri, Shoshani prophecies um, and the um, 70 shepherds of Israel. So I want to tell you right now, just right off the bat, we are good with that. I got to get this video out about that. Um, I just found amazing things and I feel like I was feeling kind of frustrated and other things anyway. And I just feel like the Lord encouraged me when I was looking in the book of Enoch. Um, and I found something that I think supports our view on the fig tree generation being 70 to 80 years and Literally, what I found looks like it basically tells us our timeline, not dates or nothing like that, but that we are the last generation. And I found it in the book of Enoch. You guys are going to love this. Just real quick, I just wanted to show you that Jude um, talks about the book of Enoch. He actually quote, quotes directly from the book of Enoch. Here in Jude 14, he says, there's a quote right there that says, See, the Lord is coming with 10,000 of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to convict everyone of all the deeds of a godly ungodliness and they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against him this is like a direct quote from the first book of enoch so i want to put that out there why i'm even reading enoch um and so yeah jude which is about a book in the actual bible quotes directly from it so the second and third book of Enoch, I do not feel peace about. I think I read it a couple years back, I read some of them, and I did just was like, something about this is off. Um, personally, I stick to the Bible, but this is why I wanted to justify why I read um, the book of Enoch. And so, yeah, let's get that out of the way. So what did I find in the book of Enoch? There is a excerpt from, I believe, chapter 10. I'm going to read it. And it talks, uh, it gives literally the amount of time that there is judgment on certain angels on earth. And it basically says how much time they have until judgment day. So let me just read it and then I'll explain. So yeah, this is chapter 10, I believe. Go bind Samjaza and his associates who have united themselves with women so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness and when their sons have slain one another and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for 70 generations in the valleys of the earth till the day of their judgment and of their consummation till the judgment that is forever and ever. Now it goes on to say, that after this 70 generations, there will be a judgment day and they will be put into fire, a fiery place, and that anyone who is, you know, wicked on the earth will join them and spend that time for eternity uh, in this fire. So that is the, the end, the white throne judgment, like that's after the millennial reign. So what am I saying here? It said, so Basically, this is the judgment of the watchers, of the ones who were angels, and they made wives of women, they made giants, they made babies with the women, they um, were killing all the people, and uh, the seed was defiled. So um, the seed of the human race was defiled with these giants, and it was all mixed together, except for Noah and his family. And, uh, you know, they, the humans were crying out to God, and, and Michael, and Uriel, and Gabriel uh, these archangels went to God and said, you know, like the human race is like, you know, in trouble, defiled. And God said, um, I didn't put this part in there, but God said in this chapter, he said, go to Noah and tell him there'll be a great flood. Tell him that his seed will be saved and, um, that he will escape. He, they, he uses the word, you know, he will escape. Um, just like we are told, you know, Pray that you're worth, uh, counted worthy to escape all that's coming on this earth. So this judgment was coming. Um, there'll be no more flooding, but they'll be rendering in fire. So that judgment was coming um, for the watchers. And then once it came and Noah got on the boat and escaped, they were going to be put into the earth, it says, for 70 generations. I just read that. So for 70 generations, these watchers were going to be put in the earth. We have an exact timeline here, literally. All we have to do is find out how much time was from Adam, the creation, to the flood, 
and then count 70 generations. And we know when judgment day comes. We don't know the day, but we can just calculate. It's proof. And what else does it do? It helps prove the fig tree generation. And I'll explain why. This is so exciting, guys. So first, what we need to do is we need to calculate the time from the creation of like humans, Adam to Noah. And I'll explain why. So the time from Adam to Noah at the time of the flood. So when the flood started was 1,656 years. Now, I'm just looking these things up online. If you have different opinions, um, let me know in the comments. I definitely will read all your comments. Um, I'm not super great with math, so I'm not claiming to have everything perfect. I'm just showing you a general idea of why if, you know, you might be starting to get a little discouraged with the fig tree generation timeline thinking, is this up? What's up with that? This can help with that because we're going to establish that a generation, I believe, is 70 to 80 years. So I'm going to explain this as simply as possible. What I did was I just thought, well, if we were in year around 1650 when the flood happened, all we have to count is 70 generations and then we'll know when like judgment day is. And we think we're in, we believe, a 7,000 year earth cycle that the Lord has a 7,000 year plan and that we're close to the 6,000th year or um, whatever. Yeah, close to the 6,000th year or in it um, so that there's a thousand year millennial reign involved. So um, this is the little calculation I did and I'll explain. We believe from Psalm 9010 that a generation is 70 to 80 years, but we weren't sure. We're like, okay, well, could it be 120 years? There's something in there about that. Is it 40 years? Um, what's a generation? But if you do this math, it works out perfectly or pretty perfect. I won't say perfectly. It works out really good. And obviously God has the perfect numbers. So what I put there was 75. 75 is what I put as a generation. So it's 70 to 80 years, according to Psalm 9010. And so I just went in the middle and I said 75 years. Now, people, this is a very typical age for people to live. Um, I'll talk at the end a little bit about my opinion about a generation. But um, 75 years is a very typical age. People don't live to be 120. People typically don't live to be just 40. I'm clearly talking about being typical. People can die at any age. Well, within reason. So... If the watchers were in the earth, they have to be jailed for 70 generations. Then if a generation is 75 years, I just timed that by 70, 70 generations. So now what I did was I just added the amount of time that the earth had been in existence till the flood, which was 1,650 years. So it brings you almost to 7,000 years. Six, I got 6,900. And again, I did it by 75. Um, you could do 78. You could do different, you know, between 70 and 80. So what does this do for us? A couple things. One, it literally, <laughs> the book of Enoch literally, you can tell me if I'm wrong here, but it literally spells out how long we have. Because if the watchers are being imprisoned for 70 generations, and then it says, you can go back and read it. You know, it's a pretty short book. Um, I think it's chapter 10. It literally says, after the watchers get out, they are going to be judged and put into fire forever and ever with those who also were sinful on the earth. And that matches the Bible. That's the white throne judgment. That's, if you guys don't know, there's, you know, we're in the grace period. After that, there's going to be a seven-year tribulation. Then there's going to be um, a millennial reign, which is a thousand years of Christ on the earth with the saints um, ruling in peace, then Satan's going to be let out to deceive the nations one last time. And then you have all the dead being judged. You have the, um, the second resurrection. Blessed are those who are part of the first res resurrection, which is everybody through all the resurrections of all times that are going to be with the Lord. And then the second resurrection is those who are going to have to go with the watchers and be put into um, the lake of fire. So my point is, we literally have a timeline here. If they're in the earth for 70 generations, all we have to do is figure out what's a generation and times that by 70. And I did that. And it works out to, to complete the whole 7,000 year earth cycle. I hope you guys understand this. I really hope I explained this all right. Um, this is really huge. We know after 70 generations, they are judged. It's over. Time's up. And there's going to be the destruction and the new heaven and the new earth and the whole thing. So how does this relate to the fig tree generation? I believe what it is, is it's supporting Psalm 9010 that we're calculating right. 
Um, because I'm sure you guys know other people have thought like Harold Camping thought it was 40 years was a generation, which is why he thought we were leaving in the eighties and things like that. Um, like logic would tell you that people live typically 70, 80 years. Um, I've been praying on what is a generation. I've been asking God about our generation. I've been really praying on that and I was not looking for this. So I think this is God's answer to me because I've been asking him like, about our generation because in the world's view a generation's like 15 years like so anyway I don't want to get too off topic but this is simple math and it brings us it shows us a timeline that literally we're almost at the 6,000th year the Jews think we're at 5783 but if you do calculations like a lot of people have done it a lot of people have calculated through um the Torah and the Tanakh and just generations we are literally it's like pretty much at the 6,000th year, which totally equals, meaning the watchers will be released in 1,000 years if 75 years is a generation. And like I said, this supports the fig tree generation because it supports the fact that 70 to 80 years is a generation because we never really were sure. I'm going to read the parable of the fig tree so that we can just kind of go over that in case somebody doesn't know about that. And then, yeah, we'll go from there. So it says, now learn a parable from the fig tree when its branch has already become tender and put forth leaves. You know that summer is near. So you also know when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. So a generation is very important that we know what it is. Um, What generation? So the old school of thought was that um, or like, I guess a very mainstream school of thought is that the generation that sees the abomination of desolation, that sees all the horrors of the tribulation, they won't pass away. A couple things I have with that, a problem with, I have with that. Number one, if you're in the middle of the tribulation and you are seeing the abomination of desolation, you don't really need Jesus to tell you your generation won't pass away because in Daniel, in the book of Daniel, it gives exact timelines, 1,290 or 60 days. So, You wouldn't need to know that. Um, God, Jesus talked in parables because he hid things from the general public. He hid things. So I feel like this is a secret. Um, And he mentions, look at the fig tree. And you could say, well, he's just saying, yeah, look at trees. You know about trees, any trees. But I think he's specific with the fig tree. And I'll explain why. Because when he cursed the fig tree that time that he was walking by a fig tree and cursed it, he was specifically talking about Israel and it was withering up and it bared no fruit. And there's plenty of times he's referred to Israel as a fig tree. And I'll read another parable where he says, look at the fig tree and all the trees. So he's definitely pointing out that the fig tree is different than the other trees. I'm saying this because um, this old school of thought was that, hey, if you're in the tribulation, you're that generation that shall not pass away. Number one, if a generation is 70 to 80 years, of course, you're not going to pass away that generation. It's literally a three and a half year thing. Like once you're seeing the abomination of desolation. Um, The other thing is, I think there is that hidden key. And I'm just going to read that other parable about um, the fig tree. Another parable. Uh, This is the lesson of the fig tree. And he spake a parable, behold, behold the fig tree and all the trees. When you know, I think this is in Luke, when you know, when they now, sorry, shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh at hand. So like, likewise, ye, when ye see all these things come to pass, know that the kingdom of God is, is nigh and at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So again, he's focusing on the generation, but what did he say in Luke now? He said, um, behold the fig tree and all the trees. I'm going to show you a map about this. So here's a map of um, independence of the Middle East. And you see here, it's all around the same time. 1951, 1962, 1956, 1948, um, 1923, 1932, again, 1967. So basically what he said is, when you see the fig tree and all the trees in that area, that's what I believe he's saying, bud forth and come to life, know the time is at hand. He's pointing out around this time period and the key is 1948 because of Israel. So where does that bring us? What I'm trying to say is the fig tree generation is so important because it has been, it. it's a personal interpretation. I mean, it's not laid out. It's not laid out for you. So people are guessing they're 
They're praying about it. They're wondering, are we right? So what I want to say is we have just, I've just shown, and I believe proven that a generation is 70 to 80 years because it fits with the book of Enoch. If the watchers are in prison for 70 generations, and this is a 7,000 year plan, the only generation that fits is the 70 to 80 year generation. So it's not 120 years, it's not 40 years. It's not like the world says, oh, you're a millennial for 15 years. I have four small, I have four kids. And when they were small, they were all part of different generations. Like some are part of Gen Z, some of my kids are part of the alpha generation. Like it's very short, but I think through what I've just showed you that the book of Enoch supports Psalm 9010, that a generation is 70 to 80 years. And then I just uh, backed it up with um, when I showed you that map about the fact that he wants us to look at the fig tree and all the trees and that they burst forth in leaf around a very specific time. Then he says, no, that you can, you know that summer is nigh. That's how you'll know when they burst forth in leaf. Or is he just talking about a tree? Is he just saying, hey, you know trees, guys. You know how trees work. If you're in the tribulation and you see the abomination of desolation, you know how trees work. That means, hey, it's soon. Your generation will not pass away. I believe it's deeper. I believe it's a deeper secret. Um, you know, we know, why would Jesus talk in parables all that time? He obviously did it to hide it from the general public. Those who have ears, let them hear. And even the disciples said, why do you talk in parables? Say things plainly. And he's like, nope, not happening. And I bet my video right now, you know, it's going to go out there. I don't think, I think a bunch of people aren't going to understand. And that's all right. He's already told me that it's certain things are for certain people. And so, and at different times. So I just think it is really important that we understand what a generation is. I've been praying to God about our personal generation and what he thinks. Why have I been praying about that? Because I've been asking him, are we bad enough? How bad is it going to take for you to do a Noah-like situation? Noah, when, in the days of Noah, what it was, was I need to wipe out the whole earth. But in the days of Lot, it was like, no, I just need to wipe out one city. Okay, in the days when um, he cursed the fig tree in, in Jesus' day when he was on earth, he was like, no, just the, the Jews are going to be given over to their enemies. There's times when he gives people over. There's times when he wipes out one place and then there's times when he wipes out the whole world and he only did that once and i'm like lord are we there things are so bad are we there and i said it out loud and somebody else said to me um because i was just wondering you know and i just mentioned it and somebody else was there and, I, and they said hey i said so what i said was is it bad enough like what is the difference between him just destroying a nation and giving a nation over to another nation um like you know in our modern day, say Russia or China, giving us over to them. Like, what is it? Is that going to happen? Or have we gone to the point where things are so bad, it's going to be a worldwide event? And the person was like, well, in the days of Noah, the difference was the seed. The seed was corrupted, right? So that's the big key. What people have been horrible and wicked throughout the generations, but when the seed is corrupted, then it needs a full out wipeout. And we see mixing and and we see uh, messing around with DNA and messing around with people's bodies. And, and that was happening in the days of Noah. It was physically messing around with, you know, their their DNA. So, yeah, that's what the answer is, is that, yeah, there's, you know, the world is wicked and all those things. But that's happened for forever, really. And many nations have been that way and have been judged like um, Nineveh, you know, you have places that are just judged. But what does it take for the whole world? Well, I think it takes a worldwide messing with the seed. And we have that. And now I just showed you in um, in uh, the book of Enoch that he gives a timeline. He literally says it's 70 generations. So as soon as we can figure out what a generation is, we got it. And I just showed you the math. You can let me know in the comments down below what you think of that. I showed you that literally from the time to no from the time to Adam to Noah was a, a certain amount of time, I believe 1,650 years or whatever. And then you just add the 70 generations and then you're there. You know when the final judgment is. Now, I'm not giving a day of the rapture. I'm not giving a day of the, you know, <laughs> white throne judgment. I'm showing you a timeline to say we're there and to say we've interpreted i believe it right it's a it's it's a risk it's a risk because we're just using uh interpretation and obviously the most amazing thing is we're using the holy spirit so is the generation that will not pass away the ones that see the abomination of desolation i'm gonna say i don't think i think that's the more shallow view of it and i don't think yes i understand why people think that i totally do I am open because I want to believe what God says. I don't want to just believe what my mind makes up or what I learn from someone else. I want the truth. 
Um, but I think I just showed you something that was really amazing. I showed you something that makes the timeline fit. I showed you something that supports the fig tree generation. I showed you something to help you realize that a generation is 70 to 80 years, according to the Book of Enoch. Um, so I hope that really blessed you guys. I think that was amazing. I think it was totally from God because I was not looking for it. And um, he blessed me with that when I was asking him about our personal generation. And um, I'm going to share one other quick thing with you. This is something I learned recently, and it's about generations again. So um, this is a little, this is a parable. It says, but whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows and saying, we have piped unto you and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he hath the devil. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children and this is Jesus saying this and it's a parable again it's not straight up understandable but guess what guys this is an Aesop fable this is uh, or sorry not is but is basically referring to an Aesop fable this is a fable from the time of Jesus so it's not something our modern uh, generations would understand what he's saying is in the Aesop fable there was a man he went out onto the water he played a flute and he asked the fish in the water to dance. Now the people in his day would understand this fable. He asked them to dance and they did not dance. So he took his net, he caught the fish, he brought them on the land, and as they were lying, dying, they were dying on the shore, they were dancing. And he said, so when I played the flute, you would not dance, but now you dance. So the time, people at the time would have understood this um, to some extent. And so what he, I believe Jesus is saying here is that John came with a sober message of repentance and you said, oh, he um, is, has a devil. And then the Son of Man came eating and drinking with a joyful message and um, like playing the flute, like a mes message of the gospel and of salvation and heaven and everything. And you said he's a glutton and a wine bibber and a friend of publicans and sinners. So both messages were rejected. And he's like, you, I play, we played the flute and you did not dance. And this generation is like that. So they would have understood that. We didn't understand that. We wouldn't. It would be hard for us to understand that now. Um, but Jesus takes it very seriously about these generations. And was he talking to people who were just in a generation of 20 years? No, I believe that was, he was talking to young people, to old people. It was a whole generation. It was a whole group of people that all rejected him at the time and a few came to him but all rejected him a generation is a large group and that is what we're in right now we're at the end of a generation and that's why we call it the fig tree generation because people who were born in 1948 are still alive there are several that are still alive and they are close to the end of it they really are but it is not over but they are very close to the 11th hour very close to the end that generation has not passed away um you know, obviously, if we found ourselves and they were in their hundreds, then I do believe it's totally different. But um, what I'm saying is, is that a generation is really important to God. And I thought that was a really interesting little um, little teaching or a little um, Bible study on that little that parable and that it's an Aesop fable. And it relates to a generation. And that's something that I've been really praying about and really seeking God about. And then when I'm looking to try to validate the 70 shepherds of Enoch prophecy, there I find this amazing nugget about the 70 generations. So hopefully that made sense to you guys. Hopefully that was interesting. And if you're not understanding something, just hit me up in the comments below, let me know. And you know, I may not have the math perfectly right, but I definitely got the general gist. The general gist is we're pretty much in the 6,000th year. We have a thousand years till these watchers are going to be judged with the rest of the earth in the second um, resurrection. And hopefully you guys understand all that I'm saying right now. But yeah, um, if we have interpreted the fig tree generation right, we're still in that generation. It's not over, it's 70 to 80 years. That's what I believe it's, this is all pointing to. Also about the Enoch prophecy, I did the research I've done so far me, uh, showed me that we are still on track. I, I really want to get this out. It's going to be kind of uh, in depth, so it takes a lot of time, but um, maybe I can sum it up a little quicker. I will say, though, that that prophecy is still in play. So get excited. That prophecy is still in play. Um, we have the Pope prophecy. We have a bunch of other things, but they are literally at the door. Like everything is at the door. Um, 
if Kaduri, Kesma, and Shoshani, all that stuff, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, their other prophecies, they are all time sensitive. And because Netanyahu is forming a government, it could be related to that. And meaning we don't have much time for those. That one, I'm not 100% sure, but um, we know the Pope prophecies have come true for a very long time. So everything's really at the door. It's extremely, extremely time sensitive. Share the gospel with people, um, you know, just tell people about the rapture and try to hang on. If you're not saved, please believe on Jesus as your savior and uh, confess it with your mouth. Just believe on him and um, just look into this stuff. It's the Bible's real. It's coming to life. It's all real. And there is an eternity. You're either going to spend it uh, with God or without heaven or hell. These things are real. Um, the book of Enoch just talked about the judgment and all that stuff, but it's all real. And yeah, if you are on the fence about the rapture or all that stuff, um, pray you're accounted worthy to escape because I do not believe God takes people who do not uh, believe. Like believing faith is the key. <laughs> you know, faith is the key. So belief and faith, you have to have that. You can't just, um, you have to take that step of faith. It's a risk. And even with this fig tree generation prophecy, I mean, it is a risk. We're taking a step of faith. I'm not saying go sell all your belongings or whatever. I'm saying take the step of faith and do the research, dig, search. And at some point you do, like I said, have to take a step of faith. Some of it you can't know for sure. Um, but yeah, we, it looks like through the research, this is being supported. And I think God gave this nugget because people are a little concerned, like, Hey, are we looking at this? Right? So yeah, I hope that blessed you guys. Um, look at the numbers again, you know, you could check out the book of Enoch chapter 10 and, um, see what he says that whole chapter. I think it's 10. It could be 10 or 11. Sorry guys. Um, but yeah, it basically outlines the timeline and it outlines what happens after the timeline and then it's basically obviously the end where there's a new heaven and earth so it it definitely supports the bible everything fits and yeah okay well i think that's it and i hope that blessed you guys and was interesting let me know if you have any questions and i will talk to you again soon until next time god bless and shalom